Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I am Kilobyte with my co-host here. Hi, uh, I'm Onyx. And on today's special episode, we have another fantastic guest with us, Jeannie Carr, the voice of Black Aragnia in Transformers Earthrise. Thank you so much for joining us. Why, thank you for having me. Um, I was wondering when I was going to be introduced. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Usually I'm first on the list, you know. (laughs) Always But but, but, no, no, enough about me. What do you think about me? (laughs) It isn't okay that you're also, uh, I'm present here with Steve, my cat. (laughs) Hi, Steve. It's good to meet you, Steve. He's completely chill right now, so it's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. I hear cats don't tend to be so chill on Earth. Well, no, he. This cat is totally chill, and uh, I. I just want to say this. This is. A, oh, he, he just sneezed. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the chill. But anyway, go on now. Let's interview. Enough okay. about Steve. More about me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the next interview will be about Steve. How about that? <laughs> and you know, he's always on. stealing the show from me. Steve always steals the show. <laughs> Well, let's get started with uh, you telling us a little bit about yourself. Bless you, Steve. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, obviously, I'm a cat lover. And I've been an actress my whole life. Mine, I'm the six of six kids. Um, Joe and Rita, my parents, uh, crazy people. (laughs) They were crazy in love, and they would sing to each other. And I had a really, really blessed, happy life. But it wasn't rich. It was very hardworking. And there was a lot of learning, teaching coming from, I'm the last, so I got to learn from everyone. So I have a lot of voices in my head. (laughs) And I've got my mother's voice, the singing voice. My dad would sing too, um, Irish tenor. And then uh, older brothers and sisters, and we were an app. And I, I wanted to be on stage with them. They were the Carr family singers, and I was only two, and I ran out on stage. And uh, someone came running after me to try to pick me up. And the audience went, no, no, let her out there. And then my mom, who was a vocal coach, always teaching lessons, she said, well, actually, Jeannie can sing a song with me. And I was only two. And she sang the I love you. Yes, I do. I love you song. And um, I echoed her. And there's a part where it says, many of hearts have been broken just because three words weren't spoken. And I blew it and I said, weren't smoking. And everybody in the audience just busted out laughing. So I was part of the act and I messed up intentionally for the rest of my life. (laughs) (laughs) Which is really uh, the ham in me. I had no idea I was going to work the audience like that. But once I got that laugh, That is the best way you learn timing. Comedic timing is to get a laugh. And then you know when you blow it because they won't laugh. (laughs) I caught on early and I did not want to exit the stage. I did not. (laughs) I just I I just loved it. I love giving joy. I love everybody laughing with me. I love being part of it. And it was just so much fun. So, yeah, that's That's fantastic. Amazing. I love that story. Thank you. So. I'll bring us to our second question. What first brought you into the world of Transformers? Now, I've answered this before at a few botcoms, so I'm sorry if I'm boring everybody. But oh, uh, no worries. <laughs> coming back and being an actress and struggling, you just, I self-submit. I self-submit to LA Casting, to Actors Access. I do have agents. I have a voiceover agent now, ever since uh, Black Rock Mia. I, I was even invited to be represented which usually you have to beg and claw to get in the door please see me please see me but now i do have a very nice agent and uh, but but at this time really no one was really represent i had agents but they don't represent you if you're a small fry and i was out here in my 20s and i was doing great i had my own insurance i had my i had three of the biggest agents going on and i was doing great and then i moved away i got married had kids and uh by the time they went to college and i came back my previous agent died <laughs> and oh, i no. got some i got i know it sounds bad but you know i was gone 20 years i wow what did i expect so <laughs> uh, when i got here though i did get a, another agent and uh i had two agents i think it was but i submitted myself on backstage uh i thought my one agent did submit me for a while and i kept saying thank you thank you thank you but actually no uh, <laughs> It was from backstage. I I went back and looked through everything. And backstage has a lot of voiceover auditions. 
And it was very ominous. It was like um, audition for video game. And so I just, I, I don't even have a reel, a voiceover reel. I just submitted myself and I can't believe it. They called me in. So when I got in, I wrote down my agent's name on the sheet because, you know, I'm trying to get my agent to go, oh, looky there, she's booking something. <laughs> so they had to call my agent and wake him up and say, we've got a part for your actor. <laughs> so I got a call back and I read the first time I read, I knew it was Air Razor. When I saw the show, I said, wait a minute, I know those lines. I read for Air Razor the first time. And uh, then the second time they called me back and I could tell it was a much different character, but I didn't know who it was. I just thought it was for a video game. And I could tell it was very forceful and kind of uh, playful. And uh, she's been around for a while and she's very independent, you know, hockey. I did my best. I did my best uh, just to just to do that. And I got a call from my agent and she said, oh yeah, by the way, you booked something. Uh, yeah, it's um, Transformers, uh, Black Arachnia. And I went, huh, okay, thanks. Wow, good, that's nice. So I was at my work and I, I told this guy who was, you know, another employee, I said, I just got, I just booked Transformers. And he goes, Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but it's voiceover. It's not that one with Shia LaBeouf. It's a. Uh, they go, oh my god, you book Transformers, and, I'm like, <laughs> and I and I go, yeah, what's a black? Because this is a spider, and I go, Shh, don't tell anybody. I have to sign an NDA. <laughs> Shut up! I didn't tell you this. Don't tell anybody. Shut up. Forget you ever heard anything. <laughs> so excited, and I, I mean, this this one employee knew what was going on more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I just had no clue what a big deal it was. And then when I got there, uh, the voice actor, not the director, but the voice actor, Philip Bach, he's super cool. I mean, he's done a million of these things. And it's just, you know, it's like, get get to it. Get, put the cans on your head. Get in there. Get in there. Do that. Do that. Okay, give me the next one. Get the next line. No, no, do more like that. Do it the way you did it in the audition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and but just business. I was done with the entire six episodes in three straight hours. Oh, good. And wow. All by myself, just one line, one line at a time. And he just set me up. He go, here's what's happening. And then towards the end, he goes, oh, here's your big hero moment. And I'm like, I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, yeah, this is it. This is it. Do this line like this is it. And, uh, you know, he really gave me great direction. I, I, I would have never. I mean, I had my idea how I wanted it to be, but he really just, he, he'd, uh, if I, if I fell out of it, he'd go, remember, she's like this. And I'd go, oh yeah, he goes, the one you did in the audition. <laughs> 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 he really loved that audition and he wasn't turning back. And um, at the Transformer, at the TFCon in Burbank, the first time I met him and his wife, they're so sweet. He said, when I heard your voice, he said, and I got chills, he goes, he said to his wife, he goes, there's Black Arachnia. There she is. And I and I was like, whoa, you knew it just in my audition? He goes, Yep. I I as soon as I heard your voice, I said, That's black. Girl. That's that's her. So that was an honor to me. And then when I saw the family of fans and the beautiful people that dress up, I was just overwhelmed with gratitude and just really, really, really blown away. And I've been at three conventions now and met so many really cool people that are just so full of um, just intelligence with uh, following the story. Many people are artists. They draw the pictures. They make their own costumes. It's just really a family. And it's it's a great honor to be Black Ragnia. <laughs> absolutely love your portrayal of Black Ragnia. Yes. It's absolutely oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm my own bot. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about the, the role of that, Black Arachnia, uh, was there any kind of inspiration for their personality as you were like in the in the recording booth and kind of trying to get into that mental state of the character? I don't want to sound creepy, but I really feel like I'm her. <laughs> I have a lot in common with her. I'm I'm divorced. Things didn't always go as I planned. I have no regrets. I've learned a lot, but I'm very much my own bot. I'm very individual. 
I'm older, an older woman who's been through a lot of ups and downs. I've lost family members. They've passed on. So I, I'm a very strong person. I've bartended <laughs> to try to keep afloat while I'm an actress on the weekends. And I've met many characters, drunks, <laughs> but nice people <laughs> as well. <laughs> and you have to really be able to deal with people and be, be smart and not overserve people. You have to handle their personalities without too badly because you want them to come back <laughs> <laughs> so um, oh i probably got a little car horn there my last name's car so <laughs> beep away <laughs> my dad would answer the phone joe's junkyard which car do you want to talk to <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's fantastic thank you I t- i'm telling you they were very unique The my dad very silly irish catholic um, world war ii vet i got to know a world war ii vet you know Because I'm the sixth of his kids. He was born in 1920. My mom born in 1927. An artist um, had six kids. She's a hero to me. And um, they were just really great parents. Um, Strict, strict, uh, Catholic. We went to church. We didn't get in the car. It was, you know, we get cursed out. Get in the car, goddamn. I thought my name was goddamn until I was five years old. (laughs) Where are you? You're late. Get in the car, goddamn it. Her church. <laughs> this is how we talk, but it was it was all good. It was all for God. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm joking on my own. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Doing my dad's raspy voice got me. <laughs> and my mother, the opera singer, she was constantly. <laughs> it was a wonderful was combination. Yes. Yeah, my sister Rita was a beauty queen, so she had all these gowns in her closet and crowns, and she was older. She had her own dance studio in the basement, so all these kids would come over Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays and Saturdays, and my mother, I was only five, and she goes, you get down there, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Those are free lessons, and you're taking them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I did not have a choice, then I got down there, and she was a beast, She'd be like, stand up straight, do this, do that, do that. Point your toe, point your toe, stuff your stomach get ah, ah. like the army at my house. <laughs> and uh, my dad, because of six kids, everybody had jobs. And uh, he probably had three different jobs. And he took on this newspaper route in Granite City, Illinois. And in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. in the morning, we all got up and rolled newspapers and loaded the, my dad's truck. And he'd go all through the city, probably like a thousand houses throwing newspapers, go to bed by about four in the morning and then get up and go to his day job. And I used to just beg to ride with him because he knew all the songs. I wanted to sing along with him and push the papers up for him. Um, Just a lot of a lot of different things going on in my house. (laughs) And I think that's where all the voices come from. My sister, older sister, Rita, used to wake me up. She had named, uh, because I was so much younger than her, she thought she ventriloquisted, um, like she pretended her hands were alive. One was Kitty K Cat and the other one was Allie. <laughs> and when it was time to wake me up for school, she'd go, hello, genius, time to get up. And then Allie would go, <laughs> go on your sleepy head. <laughs> her eyebrows had names, I be brow. Her butt was Orgel Petunia Mo. And her tongue. <laughs> Her toes and her knees, knee high knee, everything had a different voice. And uh, she used to, when it was time to for me to go to bed, <clears throat> she'd come in with a guitar. She could not play at all. and But she'd strum it violently. And she'd wear this wig and she'd be like, Mr. Peanut, 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 peanut. I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of silliness. And I think that's partly why I'm an actress. Uh, no, it's definitely why I'm an actress. So, <laughs> and, you know, and uh, I got another older sister that was constantly doing backflips and hand, handsprings and uh, pom-pom girl material. And and then my other sister, who was um, also a casting director and made costumes for acting. And so, and my brothers are lawyers, but uh, my, one was a ventriloquist in our act and the other one played piano. But so everybody was part of the act in some way or another i'm done yeah, that's, that's... <laughs> can you believe i shut no, up for great. a second is she dead <laughs> steve just looked at me he can't believe i shut up <laughs> well if if i've done my research right uh, i think this is your first voice acting project oh well actually i did a commercial when i was nine years old for a radio station about contact lenses and it won an award oh so that was my first big voiceover i got paid for it and everything and then 
when I came out here in my 20s, I did a Mervyn's commercial and I had to do a voiceover for that. But you are correct. This is my first big part as a character, although I did do a psychologist in a radio show called Deceptions with an abusive husband. Yeah. But (laughs) (laughs) really, this is this is my very first. You did a good job. This is the only thing I would say is of real mention. Definitely. Okay. So with that, uh, what were your thoughts from switching from live action roles to the voice acting role? I know you've, you did one when you were younger, uh, but now how does kind of, how does that transfer between them? Well, I'm really, really blessed that I got away with what I did. I just went in there <laughs> and somebody's like, she's a phony, get her out. That's not a VO <laughs> artist, get her out of here. She doesn't know how to intonate and do her breaths, right? <laughs> You know, I'm sure I'm sure I'm making someone angry. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm not, <laughs> sorry, but I don't care. I'm an actress. And when I get in front of, uh, you know, a, a microphone or a stage, I am the character. So I come from a whole body perspective. I'm I was her. I was standing there saying the lines like using my arms. And in fact, they did this. Uh, they had a camera on me. Uh, so the animators could see how I gesticulated and how I moved myself. And uh, so I feel like I, I kind of was her, you know? That's really cool. I see. Cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And they scared me. Like, my face looks like her. <laughs> my face looks just like her with a yellow helmet. <laughs> like, man, that is, that's my nose and my face. They got me. <laughs> feel like they were secretly spying on me and they were <laughs> it was all part of the plan what is something you wish happened with your character in the show uh well i wish i when when it ended they kind of left it like and i shouldn't be giving this away but it kind of it left like this is all we can do for now until the next time we have this big fight <laughs> kind of a way like leaving it hanging yeah. Um, but that would end the whole series, what I want. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I want to solve. I'm a problem solver, Onyx. I'm very sorry. I'm a, no, I'm no, we fix, like problem solvers here. No I want to go apologize. back in time, fix the problem that they had, fix it, and then get back my body and, you know, uh, tell that jerk Optimus Prime to not leave me next time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what I want to do. But, you know, it's up to the writers. <laughs> well, uh, well, who's has been your favorite cast member to work with, both on screen and in Earthrise? Well, because I was completely alone, I can only say I worked with my voice actor, Philip Bach, who was amazing. I loved him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I've gone to some conventions now and I got to read with um, um, four other um, Optimus Primes or wait, two other Optimus Primes. Wilkins and uh, the other guy's Dave. Was it Dave? David. Kish. Oh shoot! Yes, yes. Oh my God, they're so nice. <laughs> they are so great. I love Frank Totoro. Right? Am I saying that right? Yes. Oh my um, goodness! Frank yes, Totoro, he's such yeah. a sweetheart. He's so sweet and he's so funny. Everybody's very welcoming and kind. I just, I love everybody I meet. As a bartender, I met Peter Cullen. He sat at my bar at oh, Viva so Cantina. Cool. <laughs> yeah. At Viva Cantina, he came in with one of our regulars who was a lawyer slash judge, very good friends. And all of a sudden I turn around, I whip my head around, I go, Oh, are you winning the poo? <laughs> <laughs> that man was that man was Eeyore, not Winnie the Pooh. That man was Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't want to go. I just say, <laughs> I'll just stay here. And then he was Pepe Le Pew. It's that French accent. They start talking with the French accent and we start talking together. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> he just kept going from voice to voice to voice. And then he did Optimus Prime. And because I really didn't get to watch that because I was a mother all during that. And my kids, you know, they had they owned the television. And I was always cooking and getting things ready for school and Taekwondo and soccer. So I really, I missed it all. I missed it. I had no idea what a huge deal Transformers was. I, I, I was raising kids. I was busy, but now I know. 
And he said, oh, yes, I'm also Optimus Prime. And it just went over my head. I said, oh, that's great. That's is that an action. <laughs> just just that's gently. A- oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going nuts over Eeyore and Pepe Le Pew because I'm an older woman. We know that. And I grew up watching Looney Tunes. And I am Looney Tunes. <laughs> I love Bugs Bunny. I love Daffy Duck. I knew all those characters. And so when he started doing Pepe Le Pew, and then I, I love I love Winnie the Pooh. I played that all the time for, for my kids when they were little. It's the best show you could ever show your kids. Talk about rated G, good morals, nice stories, great voices, fantastic, ageless, timeless voice actors in that. Just everyone should rent or watch Winnie the Pooh, all of them, all of them. And he, as soon as he spoke like Eeyore, I went, oh. And, you know, I, I would use him as a lesson to my kids. If they said something that sounded negative, I'd go, don't be an Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> be a, you know, be a Tigger. <laughs> be cheery. That's the one that goes uh, T-I, I'm bad with spelling earth words. T-I double gar er. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice work on it. <laughs> and uh, how about you, Kilobyte? From Winnie the Pooh? I love tigger the best my oh, favorite he's he was crazy i think i'm a tigger <laughs> i think i'm a tigger <laughs> the tigger movie is very good uh we watched it with swerve oh, the other sad. day and it was it's so it was sad. sad but i really enjoyed it oh i can't stand the sad movies you know my son had the flu once and we stayed home from school and uh we turned on this movie fluke i highly recommend never watching that as long as you live <laughs> Oh, no. oh boy! <laughs> now you're gonna watch it. You're gonna now you're gonna watch it. I'm just I'm warning you now. You're gonna cry your eyes out. It's not. It's not okay. It's not okay. My daughter and I were literally like, "No, he's a squirrel. <laughs> His family doesn't know him anymore." <laughs> like we're crying our eyes out over this man who died, turned into a dog, then he belonged to a homeless lady, then he was a squirrel. Now you don't have to see it. There you go. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a roller coaster of a movie. There's no redeeming ending in that. Just forget it. It's awful. Oh boy. <laughs> Wanna be a squirrel looking in at your wife, remarried, having a nice life with your family, <laughs> looking in the window. No oh, Primus. <laughs> Never on the inside again. Just watch Fluke. Just watch <laughs> it. Go ahead. Watch it. <laughs> well, we've we've talked about that you've done some voice acting work and some live action work. Uh, what has been your favorite role to play? Um oh boy. I, you know, I love every role when I get it. That's terrible. I sound like a, every time I'm a role, I find a new person. I find a new voice. Um, I just, all of a sudden I take on that person. Oh, uh, I was in this play in the eighties where I was, I was Daisy Montgomery and I had a seven dialect and I had a fan and I used to go, <laughs> and I would whip the fan right when I do the thing with my voice <laughs> and I could get a laugh every time from the audience when I would just do the little fan. <laughs> so i love the southern dialect um what else i i um i uh, I, uh, um, I, I have had a lot of roles i died of drugs when i played alice in high school go ask alice um she died of it's sissy basic made the movie but um it's a true story based on a girl who had a hot a, a back a what is it a flashback And uh, she actually died of a drug flashback. But um, it sounds crazy, but the role was very fun. (laughs) Especially when she thought it was all so fun that they spiked her coke and she wanted to get along with everybody. Uh, It it just turns very tragic at the end. (laughs) But there were a lot of laughs in that. (laughs) Believe it or not. but, But that's what life is like. You know, tragedy can often come right out of something that's funny, you know. Like, yeah, don't put an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do stupid things, you win stupid prizes, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. You know, the ironic thing is, and this is the best compliment I ever got in my life. I've played Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. I've been Snow White in Snow White. I've been uh, at all different places. I was Gretel in The Sound of Music with the real Florence Henderson from The Brady Bunch. We toured with the Broadway tour company. And then I grew up on Into Marta and I did all kinds of fun Broadway touring show roles. But the school play where I died of a drug overdose at the very end <laughs> with fake blood and everything, 
my mother gave me the best compliment of my life. She 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 always was my biggest fan. But this was the best. You you know, usually your mom, she thinks you're great. And, you, you know, you're always like, <laughs> she's just doing that because she's my mom. Or, but so I really never knew, like, if her compliments were just because she was my mom or not. Because I was always so great to her. But I'm like, sure, right. You know, <laughs> so can't constantly be great. So she comes up to me afterwards when I got home. And she comes she comes in my room. She knocks on the door. And I go, yeah, mom, what is it? She goes, that play. That, that play. How did you do that? So well, are you a drugs <laughs> are you on drugs gene are you on drugs as mom no how did you know how to act high how did you know how to do that mom there's people that get high behind the bleachers at lunch every day just look at them oh, no. <laughs> the guy three times is always asking hey, do you want to take a dope and i'm like i do this no thanks guy i'm trying to get down <laughs> and you know, I try to stay cool, you know, not make him mad at me. So I'd always be like, hey, that's cool. Thanks. No, thanks. I'm trying to good. I have never taken a puff of a cigarette. I don't do drugs. I do drink a little wine, probably a little more than I should. <laughs> 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 at times. But no, my dad warned me, don't smoke. Don't succumb to peer pressure, Gene. They're gonna try to tell you it's cool. They're gonna want you to do it with you. Just say no. He said, I smoke, and your mother wouldn't let me come in the house when we had kids. That was it. She said, I'm going to get that black one. You can hear her voice now. Oh, you're going to get that black lung. <laughs> my mom was paranoid. Don't run with a stick. You're going to stab yourself like my brother did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> like in the old days, people had tragic accidents. They really died. You know, so she lived through all that. So she was constantly paranoid. Don't do that. Oh, God, don't do drugs. Don't. So I stayed pretty clean for mom and dad. That's, That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> good, good life advice. Stay yes. clean. Stay clean, and uh, also uh, apply for voiceover video games on backstage because they're <laughs> secretly <laughs> hiding major jobs there. Good advice. Good advice. They're sneaky. They don't want to tell, and they made me <laughs> sign a D an in in NDA. So I couldn't I couldn't talk after I found out. Do you know what it's like to be gagged for three years? <laughs> I just wanted to scream from the rooftops. I'm black arachnia. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm black arachnia. Yes. Do it, baby. I'll be in theaters in you. <laughs> Netflix <and> streaming. <laughs> no. In fact, I <laughs> shut up. So I have a quick question for you. But sounds like you really enjoy black arachnia. And my question is, if you couldn't choose black arachnia as your favorite transformer, who would you choose and why? Uh, I really thought Bumblebee was cool. And I, cool. I just I just liked his voice right off the bat. He just came across as like this guy that's just skirting around everything. <laughs> He's just mellow and you know He's a good boy. <laughs> he is a good boy. Yeah, yeah. I He's really a sweet boy. I thought, I thought it was cool. Of course, I like Optimus Prime. I really, I'm sorry, but Bumblebee really struck me. I liked Starscream, but his, he, he was, um, he and I were at kind of at each other's throats, so I'm not supposed <laughs> yeah. to like him. <laughs> but I couldn't help but like him. He was very annoying. Can I follow up with the Bumblebee? Which version of Bumblebee? Because there's been many iterations of him. Do you have like a particular? Well, virgin? I'm kind of a, I'm kind of new to all this. I'm like a transformer virgin here, so it would have to be the one that was in Kingdom with me. And that's fair. Uh, that's fair. What was his name again? I forgive me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> I'm no, there will be no yelling in here, or I'll bring a band hammer. He was at the the convention and a very nice nice guy, and you know he he looked like Bumblebee. I think they did that camera thing with him too. Because his facial expressions, he looks just like Bumblebee, the way it's animated. Yeah. I'm trying to find a name. I can't I can't remember uh, the name. I should know. I just met him briefly. I should know. Joe? Um, it could be Joe. Could be Joe. Uh, I said I really liked Bumblebee, and then he goes, oh, that was my part. <laughs> I was like, well, I thought it was cool. What a coincidence. <laughs> and he can I think he said he had a uh, military experience. So he just comes across as like a military guy that just knows what he's doing. Not that you don't, if you don't aren't, I, what am I saying? But <laughs> <laughs> it helps with the role. Yeah. 
Yeah, he just came across as is a hero, you know, and he was the one that was going around getting all the what was it like battery packs or whatever he was bootlegging. The the, say that again. The energon. The energon. Forgive me. I must know the energon. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we need the energon. Yes. Bumblebee. Bumblebee <laughs> was uh, able to get it. He was bootlegging. So I, I always like people. <laughs> I always like people that are going around the system and doing it, you know, in a, especially if the system's bad or corrupt. Oh yeah. Take I love charge. heroes. I like heroes. <laughs> people, people that don't comply to nonsense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, then our next question is what is your favorite thing about being in the Transformers fan base? Um, I'm just the people, the people it's when I get to go to the co- the convention and meet the people, I'm amazed at their absolute uh, engulfment with each character, their knowledge. They start arguing over, but that wasn't animated. That was, <laughs> they're so passionate. <laughs> they're so passionate in their costumes. And I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just really, I feel very blessed to be part of it all. It's, it's, it's a wonderful family to be part of. Fantastic. It, it is fun. I love the conventions and all that and meeting all the different people and all their experiences. Yeah. I, and you're like, these people are such quality people. Yeah. And they're all together. They're really caring, kind people with very open hearts, open minds, uh, they just seem to be that breed of just extremely caring people yeah. and kindness. And I and there's they have real kind hearts. And it's great when you're in that company whenever you can. And I would never turn down a convention. I'm hoping I get invited to more. Um, yeah, there. let's go. <laughs> hey, call them and say bring in Black Arachnia because I want to be there with you. <laughs> I want to be with the I want to be with the people. I want to be with uh, the people who know the most that I can learn from. And I hope I get another opportunity to play Black Arachnia again. I'd love yeah. to be. I'd love to do that again. I don't know what'll happen. I'd love to but... hear it again. Maybe you'll get a live action role. Maybe let's do it a little live oh, action the, the, sequel, yeah. the sequel to the rise of the beast if there's any do it we'll, have well i'd have to work out like gi jane to have that way <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm gonna have to and i do i do work out i run every day i don't know if you know that about me i run like a i run about five miles a day and um i i exercise so yeah i'm trying i'm trying i'm like fergalicious i'm staying <laughs> i'm keeping up my fitness <laughs> <laughs> so what is something no one knows about you that you wish more people did know um uh, first and foremost i i love and believe in jesus christ i i have to go there i pray every day i start out first thing in the morning thank you god for this life i would be nothing i would have fear i feel fearless because of my faith and my relationship with with god uh, i have to say that first The second thing I'm going to say is I'm a mother. I have two of the most fabulous children. I'm so proud of them. And um, I would die for them. I mean, they're just, they're the greatest. And that's, of anything I've ever done in my life, I've never done anything that I think is worth the value of being a mother. Um, I don't know how I could, it just changes your whole perspective around. Um, Before, I was just me being an actress. I want to be famous. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, it's kind of vain and shallow existence. The minute it all turns around and points away from me and points onto these two little innocent beings that I'm responsible for. And I had to learn how to be a good mother. And I had to learn. They taught me. And um, it's the best thing I've ever done. My It's the best role I ever played in my life. <laughs> I'm playing the uh, part of mom. <laughs> and if you talk to me like that again, then you're choosing to spend time out. And <laughs> oh no, I'm getting PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> here, go- here comes my evil black rat. Right <laughs> <laughs> I bought you that iPhone. Now I hand it over and I don't care who you're texting right now. It's my phone. <laughs> it's my phone. Um, okay. Third thing is I am a jazz musician. I play in a jazz band. I play trombone and I sing. Oh, that's and wonderful. I play guitar too and piano and I've written songs. I was a new Christy minstrel. You probably don't know who that is, but it was a really big band back in the seventies, eighties, nineties. 
And I toured for a year singing and playing guitar and uh, my trombone, writing songs. And I actually had a record that that was the bumper music for K-Rock for years uh, oh, about sh shopping at a mall. Uh, so I'm in a jazz band gig, uh, the 21st. I don't know if anybody lives in North Hollywood at the Mayflower Club. It's the battle of two big bands and I'm singing a song, a very special song. And uh, so I get I get to sing a song, but it's called This Ain't Your Daddy's Big Band and I play trombone. I'm only third chair. I took 20 years out to raise kids. So these guys that I'm playing with, they're top notch. They've been touring all over the world. And I'm I'm just honored that I'm I'm in the band. I'm just so honored. It, you know, I can read, I can still read. I was first chair all state in high school. So my chops are in my reading ability got me in and um, but I'm I'm just so honored to be in this band. It's really cool. They play great like, you know, James Bond music, you know, great, great music. So who's coming? You coming? You guys live here? Come on over. <laughs> I gotta find a the plane, 21st, I think, I think it's yes. a Sunday at 530. <laughs> I expect to see you there. <laughs> oh, goodness. Do you have any other projects you are currently working on at the moment? I know you mentioned the band thing, but is there any uh, big acting roles or anything that is beyond that that you're allowed to talk about, hopefully? Uh, well, I've had a lot of uh, auditions and you don't know because sometimes you'll hear back a month after you audition and they'll say mm -hmm. you booked it. So I have a lot of fish in the pan. I'm hoping something flips back out at me. <laughs> I have a, a movie that I was cast in that had a delay with production that I should be hearing from shortly. And it's called Devil's Ride. And uh, so I'm part of that cast. Um, I don't know if anybody ever watches those Darman uh, videos. I star in about six of those. And you can see me playing the mom of a kid who uh, says that I died and has a funeral for me so he could get a GoFundMe to buy an iPhone 14. <laughs> oh, and I come out of the <laughs> casket. And I have a British accent in that one. Oh, uh, yeah, some powerful British, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, so there's like six of those going around and they get, they get lots of views. It's fun. But nothing that I'm working on right this minute except for auditioning and waiting. Yeah. That's the actor's life, auditioning, waiting, auditioning, waiting. Yeah, it seems so. to be a, a similar answer from the last couple of interviews we've done. It's like, oh, mostly auditioning. <laughs> oh, uh, with me or with other actors? Other actors as well. Oh, we're all out here just uh, circling like a bunch of uh, 747s with uh, no <laughs> runway. <laughs> Your tray top tables should be up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're not, lady. Just give me a job. <laughs> Run me on a runway. <laughs> I'm available. Hi. <laughs> we'll we'll make sure to put all of that information in the description and all of the, the the event of with the band and all of those in the description, so the the fans can can check out the event and get some tickets. Oh, I hope so. It's uh, there's going to be two big bands battling it out. It's going to be insane. Of course, there's adult beverages. <laughs> we like those here it's where's bar it's a bar <laughs> restaurant so and two big jazz bands so bring your dance shoes and uh i'll be blowing the bone <laughs> <laughs> they call us bone one bone two bone three bone four i'm bone three we're bone players i'm a bone player in the big band so uh that's the thing that nobody really knows about me i think no, I think they know. Cat got out of that. <laughs> there we go. Well, we got to the section of the interview where you get to ask us any questions. Do you have any other questions for us? Um, how long have you been doing this? This will be good question. our <laughs> second year. Yeah, this would be second year. Like wow. year of running the, the podcast. And what what are your favorite types of interviews? Oh, I really love the interviews where you can definitely tell like everyone's having a good time. Everyone's vibing. Everyone's like going off and talking about all these different tangents, things that like you didn't even ask about. And they will go into those and you get to learn more about the person and you can feel like a sense of like they're getting comfortable. If that makes sense. Those are my yes. favorite kind of interviews. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, the, the ones yeah. where everybody's having fun are always the, the best because uh, it's definitely a blast learning uh, for, for from the interviewer 
or interviewee side yes. perspective and kind of like they, they just tell us all these crazy stories and it's just always fun and it just it's all about having fun in the podcast and I think that that's that's very good oh, I I had fun today I had a great what's your <laughs> what's your dream interview oh it's Peter Cullen isn't it <laughs> dream interview Ooh, that's dream a dream interview one. Who do you want to get on your show next? I would like to interview David K. Oh, he's a nice That'd guy. Be, that'd be cool. David K could be fun. Could be fun. Ask yes. him on the Instagram, yes. boys. Get get to it. Ask <laughs> on the Instagram. I think, I think Sue Blue would be fun too. Sue Blue would be good yeah. too. Yes. The original um RC. RC. Yeah, RC. And then she played um Transmutate. RC. Wait and, a minute. Yeah. I think I met her in Nashville. Does she have red hair? She's such a doll. Uh, I, uh, I, I think you think were on a so. panel uh, a few Comic Cons back. It was the female voices in Transformers, and you did a panel with uh, Lindsay Rousseau and Sue Blue, and there was uh, another actress on there. I can't remember right now. Oh, okay. No, no uh, uh, Lindsay, I only have been with her once. That was my first convention. This one was in Nashville. I don't mm. think it was Sue Blue then. Ah, I, now I'm going to die. She's, <laughs> I have to start writing everybody's names down. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's a lot of names. There's so many different shows of Transformers and such a wonderful and expanding cast that it's kind of hard to keep track of all of them. <laughs> it, it is crazy. It is crazy. But it's it was a super thrill for me, and I'm so honored. And uh, I just... I can't believe, uh, you know, that it's it's still going on. <laughs> you know, yes. usually you leave a show and that's kind of like a memory and you leave it behind. But this one doesn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> it follows you everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably get flown to Florida or something and then I, I'll meet people there. I hope I do. That'd be Speaking exciting. Of- following you everywhere. Where can the listeners find you on social media? Or do you have a specific website or YouTube channel? No, I'm just on Instagram. I'm I'm kind of laying low. I don't want to get in trouble every time I do something and I sign an ND, an NDA. I I I don't I can I can't put pictures up of me on sets. Yeah, I did something on Young and the Restless and I couldn't talk about it for a long time. But now <laughs> it's out. It was their 60th anniversary. I played a governor's wife on a red carpet and they were all genie, genie. And I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, one of those ridiculous things. But oh no, Instagram, Instagram. Oh, boy, I talk about getting off track. Okay. <laughs> Where am I? Oh yeah, the cat's here. Hi, Steve. Okay. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Steve loves us. So um, yes, it's Car 7 on Instagram. And I, I don't know why it's seven. I couldn't get six. <laughs> I, I wanted to be Genie Car 6. Who else in the world is the six of six kids and stole my handle? I don't know who you are, <laughs> but I hope you end it soon. <laughs> Black Arachnid is coming out. Yes, so G J E A N N E C A R R seven, and you'll see me right there. Some guy sketched my face and sent it to me, and I'm like, "Wow, why?" <laughs> <laughs> but okay, <laughs> yeah, and we'll put all those links in the descriptions for the listeners so they can. Uh, yeah, he did a good anything. job. I just thought, wow, this is just people do things. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the niceness of, of knowing everybody is like, you just don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. They draw, draw pictures of black arachnia. They asked me to sign them. I had to sign someone's spider and I like on the spider's back. I thought that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and super, super neat. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate having you on and it's been a wonderful ride. It's been a the whole interview. <laughs> I enjoyed every single story. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm sure you know that, you know, I could go on for five more hours, but times. <laughs> well, that just means we got to do another one of these, right? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll come back some sometime. Uh, wait, wait till I get something to brag about. I got nothing. Right. <laughs> I got dirt, boys. I'm, I'm flying in circles with the 747s looking for a runway. <laughs> Hire me. Uh, okay. All right. I love Thank that you. metaphor. <laughs> yes. How pathetic, well, lady. Okay. 
<laughs> Tilo, you want to lead us out? Yes. As always, listeners, we hope you're all staying safe out there. And again, Jeannie, thank you so much for being here. And as always, to all are one. To all are one. Thank you both so much for having me. 